Today's American Story with Bob Dotson updates one of Bob's most popular pieces. It's a sweet story about a boss who altered his own plans to help out his old employees. Bud Goldrunner was enjoying an active retirement. Just 54, he traveled widely and lived well. After selling a candy company in St. Louis eight years before, for a sweet profit. Hi, Deb. How's it going? But one day, he got a call hey. from a couple of longtime employees, Debbie and Marley Otto. They needed some help. They needed a place to work. My unemployment ran out. And, uh, I think I knocked on everybody's door in St. Louis. So Bud gave up all this and returned to 80-hour work weeks, doing what he's done since he started his first business at 18. He bought another little store, his 10th, and staffed it with all those old employees who needed work. He gave up his own retirement so they could have a paycheck until they reached theirs. If you could create the perfect candy for him, what would it be? Probably a heart. Marley and Debbie had worked side by side making chocolates since they were teenagers. When they retired last fall, you were in there rooting for me. Bud kept working, training their son-in-law, Brian. On a bad day, he don't even yelp. On a good day, he offered him the company for free. People are as important as profit. Kay Woods, another who was plucked from the unemployment line, got the same gift. What have you done for him? Keep him in line. <laughs> for 28 years. We just got to get you moving faster. Bud didn't just give them the business. He spent the last five years. How many pounds are you going to make? 30? Teaching them how to be the boss. I've got a few new items here that I want to work on. Sales at Lake Forest Confections Good morning. are strong despite the recession. Without their hard work, I would have never been the success that I am. And uh, I wanted to give back. Bud never married. He has no children. I consider my employees my family. So that's why he made them an offer they couldn't refuse. On the day Bud announced his second retirement, Brian asked for a meeting. He came to me with tears in his eyes. Saying he wanted his weekends back. Life is too short to just worry about money. You gotta worry about your happiness. Kay decided not to take the company either. I value my family life. She needed more time with her six grandkids. I understood it, um, but it was very, it was very uh, wrenching. But didn't want them to end up back on the street again, so he sold the business to a family of candy makers who agreed to keep his family. We hope they stay on for years and years and years with us. What kind of guarantee do the employees have that they won't be back in the same position they were the last time? We've been in business uh, 30 years. I've never had to lay anybody off. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Brian, the reluctant boss, no is now teaching his new boss. Don't mess too many up because you like to eat all the bad ones. Knowing how the story ends, would you do it again? I would be there. Start another company? Yep, if that's, if that's what I'm asked to do, I would do that. Bud did not find his fairy tale ending, but Brian and Kay discovered something they thought was even better, their own vision of happiness. If you get up in the morning with a smile on your face and look forward to going to do whatever, then that's what you should be doing. After all, life is not just about making money. It's finding what makes you smile. For today, Bob Dotson, NBC News, with an American story in Clayton, Missouri. Love that story. Eh, very so nice. Sweet. And Great look who has joined us, Ralph Macchio, is helping out Hoda this morning on the fourth hour of today. What are you getting yourself into? Oh, I don't know. I'll find out in about an hour, well, I guess. Yeah. Ralph well, we, said he watched the other hosts and they got nothing on him. Uh, <laughs> he's got, he's got, he's got, got this one. No, he's got I rated, I rated. Everyone the, for, did a great The first job. thing when, when Ann realized you were coming on, she goes, Karate Kid, I love this guy. Yeah. Well, yeah. no, no, because I think it was groundbreaking at yeah. the time and the way you did it. I mean, you were, you were acting in this way that I think was revelatory because it was about discovering not only a way of doing karate, but mm -hmm. how people think mm. in Japan yeah. and being half Japanese, I was like, this guy gets this. Yeah. He's yeah. this Listen, that character is a very, um, you know, he's very relatable. Yeah. In